island in the South China Sea. The remote island of Situ plays a strategic role in helping Manila claim sovereignty in the face of a resurgent China. Loggers are threatening Papua New Guinea's unique forest creatures. The tree kangaroo and the bird of paradise could disappear as a result of deforestation and hunting. The European Union will place extra tariffs on aluminium foil coming from China. They say producers in China benefited from excessive and unfair subsidies. Chinese authorities are warning live streamers to review their own tax returns and report them by the end of the year. This comes just days after China's queen of live streaming, Bia, was fined 210 million US dollars for tax evasion. And you can keep up with news in Asia and beyond 24 7 on CNA Digital. Ahead on Asia Now, at least one country recommending a fourth dose of the COVID-19 vaccine for people over 60 years old. And later, train services disrupted in the Iranian capital Tehran after two metro trains collide. Every day, the financial world goes through dramatic rise and falls. We'll track the biggest market movers and show you where the opportunities lie. Get the experts' take on the performance of key indices. Plus all the analysis to help you understand forces driving global economies. The daily business news you need, only on CNA. This segment is brought to you by Xeon Corporation. Three successors of family empires are on a mission to green their businesses and build a more sustainable future. We are literally emptying the oceans. We are on the edge and we need to change the ways that we do things fast. Does the world really need to go hungry before we actually do something about it? Sustainability is a way of life, it's not a concept. Never doubt that a group of caring and committed citizens can change the world because indeed it's the only thing that ever has. Follow their trials, tribulations and triumphs on Sense and Sustainability, a brand new series premiering January 3rd on CNA. From sky to sea, discover China's plans for its digital Silk Road. Silk Road 2.0. China in a post-pandemic world. Premieres January 2022. Updating this hour's top stories, flood-stricken Malaysians pull together to focus on relief work as the Weather Bureau lifts rain warnings in several areas. Singapore is freezing its quarantine-free travel program for fully vaccinated visitors amid a surge in Omicron cases. The government will suspend the sale of tickets for arriving flights and buses for four weeks. South Korea is almost doubling its hospital bed capacity for COVID-19 cases as the number of critically ill coronavirus patients reaches a record high.
The complications from COVID could be long-lasting. They can include breathlessness, joint pain, fatigue, and memory loss. Now, experts aren't sure what causes it and how common long COVID is. One immunobiologist at Yale is part of a group trying to unlock the mysteries of this illness. She tells us the extent vaccines and booster shots play in preventing or reducing the likelihood of contracting long COVID, especially amid a rise in Omicron infections. The vaccines are um, important in preventing infection. Uh, and obviously, if you prevent infection, you eliminate the possibility of getting long COVID. So um, absolutely, vaccines are important and um, booster vaccines are also important in order to elevate the um, level of immunity that can be, especially for the Omicron variant, um, that is has much more capability for escaping uh, existing immunity with the, just the two doses of vaccine. So um, in the U.S., for instance, we are um, boosting people with the third dose of mRNA vaccine, and that's going to be really important to prevent infection and prevent uh, long-term consequences from getting Omicron. Um, and interestingly, if you look at the breakthrough cases, however, in some papers, a breakthrough cases, there are about half reduction in the development of long COVID through breakthrough cases. Um, however, in other papers, there appears to be no decline in the percentage of long COVID uh, after the breakthrough infection compared to an unvaccinated person getting long COVID after acute infection. Um, and there's another study that's interesting that uh, is, a, is still a preprint, but ha has followed the uh, long COVID consequences of people who acquired SARS-CoV-2 infection and then got uh, immunized with vaccines. And that study demonstrates that within the first four weeks of getting the infection, people who've gotten the vaccine had much reduced um, risk for developing long COVID. And of course, prior to... Um, uh, infection, if people got the vaccine, also reduced the risk um, much further. So it appears that the vaccines are helping prevent the development of long COVID as well. The World Health Organization's top official for Europe is telling the region to brace for an Omicron storm. He's warning of a significant surge in coronavirus cases that would strain healthcare systems. Omicron has been detected in about 90 countries and regions in the world, including more than half of Europe. We can see another storm coming. Omicron is becoming, or already has become dominant in several countries, including Denmark, Portugal and the United Kingdom, where its numbers are doubling every one and a half to three days. Within weeks, Omicron will dominate in more countries of the region with a threat to push already overwhelmed health systems further to the brink. The sheer volume of new COVID-19 infections could lead to more hospitalization and to disruption of other critical health services. Early evidence supports that the COVID-19 vaccines continue to do their job to boost Boost, boost. The booster is the single most important defense against the Omicron. Several countries in Europe, they're not taking their chances with Omicron. They are reimposing strict COVID-19 measures in light of a potential surge in infections after the holidays. Germany is bringing back tougher rules on social contact. Gatherings among the vaccinated will be limited to groups of 10. Those who have not received their shot can only meet two people outside their household. Nightclubs will remain closed and the restrictions will kick in after Christmas. Stricter measures in Portugal as well. Nightlife establishments will be closed from the 26th of December for at least two weeks. And residents, now they'll be required to provide a negative COVID-19 test to stay at hotels or attend events. Outdoor gatherings will be limited to 10 people and people have also been told to work from home. The same also goes for those in Sweden who are able to work remotely. The rule will take effect from tomorrow along with other new measures. They are private gatherings will be capped at 50 people plus a vaccination pass will be required at public events where there are more than 500 visitors. Meanwhile... France is considering extending its new health pass to workplaces. The document, which shows proof of vaccination, 
COVID-19 recovery or a recent negative test result is already required for access to public transport, restaurants and cultural events. By making it mandatory for work, authorities hope they can convince more people to get the jab. U.S. President Joe Biden is stepping up his COVID-19 battle plan to counter the fast-spreading Omicron variant. He has promised more jabs, more tests and more troops to help in the effort. The president says this is a critical moment, admitting that Omicron has spread faster than expected to become the dominant strain. But he's cautiously optimistic as he mulls reversing travel bans that were imposed in reaction to the variant. With Omicron accounting for three quarters of new infections in the U.S., Mr. Biden has announced new measures with no mention of any lockdown. Vaccines remain his key weapon. The answer is straightforward. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have good reason to be concerned. You're at a high risk of getting sick. And if you get sick, you're likely to spread it to others, including friends and family. And the unvaccinated have a significantly higher risk of ending up in a hospital <clears throat> or even dying. Almost everyone who has died from COVID-19 in the past many months has been unvaccinated. And just the other day, former President Trump announced he had gotten his booster shot. It may be one of the few things he and I agree on. Latest data from the CDC shows differences in protection levels. These figures are per 100,000 people from 451 infections among the unvaccinated to 134 for the vaccinated, right down to 48 for those who have had their booster shots. Now, as for the death rate, the divide is even wider. So six for the unvaccinated to 0.1 for those with booster shots. These are the new measures in the Biden's battle plan. Half a billion free at home rapid tests, more testing sites more hospital capacity, which includes deploying 1,000 military medical personnel to support hospitals that are overwhelmed. Omicron has already prompted some countries to reimpose restrictions and go back into lockdown, but Mr Biden promised that will not be happening in the US. He insists America is prepared with enough resources, including medical gowns and gear. And Simon Marx tells us Mr Biden has offered an explanation on why Omicron has caught his government off guard and what critics are saying about his administration's latest measures. Well, he insisted uh, that public health advisers had not predicted how rapidly and extensively the Omicron variant was going to spread through the United States. Uh, and he said that if you'd said to him a, a month ago that there was a prospect of seeing it spread so rapidly, no one would have believed it. Uh, I think it's worth uh, reminding ourselves that it was three weeks ago that it was evident from the South African data that Omicron was spreading uh, very vigorously indeed. The president's uh, efforts today were tough love towards the unvaccinated, threatening them really with a very stark and dire time ahead uh, as the variant uh, continues to prey on them. Uh, but for the vaccinated, he offered rewards. He said that they could enjoy Christmas uh, as they have planned. Now, there was no guidance whatsoever offered to Americans today uh, by the president or other White House officials on the size of family gatherings uh, or holiday parties that it's safe for them to attend if they are uh, vaccinated or whether they should be rethinking some of the travel that Dr. Anthony Fauci has warned could serve as an Omicron super spreader event over uh, the course of the next 10 days or so here in the United States. And that pledge by President Biden of half a billion free COVID-19 testing kits that he unveiled today, there were no answers from the White House as to how they're going to be distributed or what the eligibility will be for Americans who want to get their hands on them. And critics of the president say that just plays into this notion that he's still very much trying to catch up to Omicron's reality here. An Israeli expert panel has recommended a fourth coronavirus vaccine dose for segments of the population. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett says this will help fight Omicron. The decision is pending formal approval by senior health officials. 
Israel is set to offer a fourth dose of the COVID-19 vaccine to people older than 60. A health ministry expert panel recommended the fourth shot on Tuesday, which was swiftly welcomed by Prime Minister Naftali Bennett as, quote, great news that will help us overcome the Omicron wave that is spreading around the world. Israel's announcement comes after the country confirmed its first known death from the Omicron variant. A medical center in Beersheba said the man in his 60s died on Monday, two weeks after he was admitted to the COVID ward. He also suffered from a number of pre-existing conditions. On Tuesday, the health ministry said that there were at least 340 known cases of Omicron. The government expanded travel bans this week to include the United States, Germany, Italy, Turkey and Canada to try to curb the spread of the virus. Bennett's office said it had also encouraged remote work by reducing office attendance to 50 percent for public sector employees. Meanwhile, Defense Minister Benny Gantz ordered the military's home front command to prepare for the eventuality of 5,000 new cases per day, according to his office. At least 11 people are injured after two metro trains collided in the Iranian capital, Tehran. Local media said one of the victims is said to have suffered serious injuries and in critical condition. State TV footage showed one train derailed after the crash, which occurred in the Chitka area. The cause of the derailment is unknown, but a subway official said it's under investigation. Rescue operations ongoing in parts of northeastern Brazil, which have been battered by torrential rains and floods over the past few weeks. At least 14 people have been killed and 276 injured, with the floods affecting nearly 300,000 people. Officials are warning of a new round of heavy downpour later this month. Eugenia is back in a moment with your Asia Business Update, including Microsoft's $16 billion acquisition to expand cloud services in healthcare. Plus, China chasing a football dream. And